Did anyone know Hugh Jackman was in this movie? Wait, hang on. I am talking about the 2006 DreamWorks animation movie, Flushed Away. Today we're going to be going through an iceberg that I found on Reddit by Cy Moon. We're going to be doing it because it genuinely piqued my baby boy curiosity. We are about to get flushed away. I'm just going to start off with one of the craziest things that you're going to see today. This entry almost deserves its own video. Obviously, the 2006 Flushed Away video game. This game is absolutely fucking bananas. As you can see, it did not age well. This game is actually going to make the video really hard because it doesn't have the same plot as the movie. There are different characters and locations in the game that were cut from the movie, and I really want to consider it canon to the Flushed Away lore. I'm going to show you as much of the game as I can so that it makes sense. So we start the game in Roddy's room with absolutely zero context, and right away we're greeted by Roddy's two butlers, Gilbert and Sullivan. So right at the start of the game, there are two characters who were cut from the movie because they didn't make any sense. After the game introduces us to its uncomfortable platforming setup, we get flushed just like in the movie. Again, just like in the movie, Roddy gets jetted down the toilet into Retropolis, and uh, from this point on, everything in the game is different from the movie. When he first gets to Retropolis, he meets this character named Socket Set, who gives him all these random missions like, hey, go collect a jar of fireflies. It's going to take half the game. But we'll get to Socket Set later. Roddy eventually does all these side quests just so he can meet Rita to do more side quests on the Jolly Roger, Jammy Dodger, which, if you didn't know, is Rita's boat. You fucking weeb. Honestly, a huge portion of the game is just sailing around the Jolly Roger Jammy Dodger doing tutorials and side quests, which is pretty fucking sick, actually. So Rita ends up crashing the boat and they get captured by Toad's henchmen just so they can escape on the boat. So I guess the boat can just sink and be done in the movie, but it's fucking invincible in the game. Weird. Anyway, enough about the Jolly Rock Jammy Dodger, because we are off to meet another character that was cut from production. Maybe you failed before. You are truly the chosen one. And you have now been chosen to speak with Charlie, the mayor of exotic goods. So have a nice day. So that is the prophet of Retropolis. And not only did he just call Roddy the chosen one, but he also introduced another cut character for us. Confucius once say, if merchandise not to customers liking, customers should get out of his shop. So this is Charlie Wu, a scumbag salesman who gives Roddy a quest to save some orphans by clearing a clogged drain with the Jolly Rod Jammy Dodger. Fuck! For the next side mission, we're saying, fuck Charlie Wu, because he was crip walking all up and down socket set side of town. Chinatown, baby. Yeah, that's right. In the 2006 Flushed Away video game, you go to fucking Chinatown. You also go to Little Soho, but it's not as funny or interesting, so here's that. Then Roddy is confronted by Le Frog, and he defeats him in the most anticlimactic way. Then Roddy and Rita are captured by Toad, Fat Betty, Lady Killer, and Thimblenose Ted. Is it just me, or does Thimblenose Ted actually look gangster? And finally, they beat all the bad guys and they wrap the story up in a nice, neat little bell. Just kidding, because you know your boys left it on a motherfucking cliffhanger. Oh, and if you're wondering, they didn't make a second game. But while I was looking, I found this lovely comment here. So there was allegedly a line of Happy Meal toys that dropped with the release of the movie, 
because DreamWorks and McDonald's had deals for that sort of thing before Disney started taking over the world. In all, there were six toys. Roddy, Rita, Toad, LeFrog, Sid, and Whitey. Whitey obviously having the most drip. You can also buy the complete unopened set here on eBay if you need that kind of clout in your life, I guess. So this is an Easter egg hidden right at the start of the movie. In this shot, you can see Alex the Lion from Madagascar on the bookshelf and on the windowsill. Beside him is the grommet toy on the floor, but we'll get to that in a minute. So I think Wallace and Gromit are on the top part of this list because it's not apparently clear that the uh, same people who made Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run made Flushed Away. Also, if I had to weigh the amount of Wallace and Gromit references in Flushed Away, it would be about one metric fuck ton. This entry is a six second clip from the movie in the beginning showing Roddy from a James Bond gun barrel kind of view. This is a very small detail added into the film. When Roddy is like first going through his wardrobe, he pulls out a bunch of different outfits and one of them is an Elvis jumpsuit. There's also a conspiracy on whether Roddy almost dying while being flushed down the toilet is in reference to the king dying on the toilet. I like to ignore that one. In the same scene of Roddy going through his wardrobe, he also shows a very old school Wolverine outfit. I'll just show you the clip. Gilbert and Sullivan were supposed to be Roddy's hamster butlers, but they were allegedly cut from production because they didn't make any sense. So obviously, whenever I was a kid, I had no idea that Sid was supposed to be representative of a real person. They do not repeat not a food like this in the sewer. Which is the lead singer of the Sex Pistols, Sid Vicious. I mean, look at the comparison. Looking back on it now, I have no idea how I didn't connect this point, but uh, oh yeah, it's because I was a fucking kid. So all I could find for this entry was from a DreamWorks fandom page, and it says that the directors wanted to have pirate villains in the film, but DreamWorks shot it down because they didn't think pirates were marketable. When Roddy first gets flushed down the toilet, he uh, bumps into this little goldfish who asks him, Have you seen my dad? If you don't know who Whitey is, he is the overly friendly albino rat that can always be found beside Spike. He is overly friendly in the movie, so friendly that he forgets what side he is on. I love a happy ending. Oh, he goes soft. This entry digs into the backstory of Whitey, which I am now deeming official canon to the flushed away lore. He was first a dark gray lab rat in a shampoo testing facility and the shampoo turned him white. Eventually Whitey either escaped or he was flushed by the scientists after he fulfilled their purpose. Or maybe they were just jealous of all that drip. If you type this into Google, this is the first page that comes up. This is a legit Mason's Lodge of Canada. And they say, and I quote, Unfortunately, the image is not clear. So there is a really creepy frog who is a mime. His name is Marcel, and he is shown carrying a phone just to deliver Toad's messages. Anyway, he references the real mime artist, Marcel Marco. All of his pictures are equally creepy. It doesn't matter. Just Google image. Marcel Marcel. This entry could be referring to when Roddy and Rita go back up to the top, and Roddy pretends that Sid is his brother so that he doesn't look alone. This is uh, Rupert. What? 
Rupert, this is Rita. She's been so looking forward to meeting my brother. So I could not find anything online about flushed away bootleg toys. As you can see, I had to message the creator of this iceberg, Simon, to get a little bit of help on this entry. He happily responded with some of the most disturbing images of children's toys that I have ever seen. No cap. Since I couldn't find these online, I'm getting a little worried that Simon was just really into Flushed Away as a kid and like his grandma made these for him or something and then just fucking scarred him for life. So in the movie, it's mentioned at the start that Roddy's family is going away on vacation and they have plane tickets for their holiday that they don't want to miss. It actually never acknowledges where they went, but this is never answered in the movie. I don't know if this is a take on some fucking flushed away fan fiction, or if it's the idea that Roddy and Rita go on to have little rat babies together, which is actually kind of supported by the video game. At the end, when Rita asks Roddy if he wants to be her first mate. Do you want to be my first mate or not? Are you gonna stand there gaping or are you coming down? Whatever that means. One plot hole that the movie just glosses over is this terrifying scene toward the end of the movie, when Roddy's owners come home to find Sid in the house. This is the life, right? Roddy, I'm home, <gasps> and I've brought you a new friend. <coughs> Obviously, we can be led to believe that the cat fully unalived Sid. So this stems from the fact that there are countless references to Wallace and Gromit in Flush Away and that they were made by the same people. Wendelin appears in a framed photo. Roddy's wardrobe also has Wallace's sweater in it. There's a Gromit plush toy. So... I think it's safe to say... Yes, they are connected. But I think we should also note some interesting facts that are associated with this. For starters, Flushed Away is the third collaboration between DreamWorks and the stop-motion artist Aardman. The first two movies were, of course, Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run. And Flushed Away was the last fucking movie that DreamWorks ever did with Aardman. The word on the street was that Aardman wanted to do the whole movie in stop motion, but he couldn't get the water to look realistic. So the entire movie is CG. I'm going to show you a picture so you know I'm not lying when I tell you this. It cost DreamWorks $149 million to make this goddamn movie. They were pissed that it flopped. They were pissed. They cut all ties with Aardman. So, both obviously and not obviously, I think, classism is a very prevalent theme in Flushed Away. And we know this because there are two different classes of rats, the rich above-ground rats and the dirty, poor sewer rats. Roddy starts the movie in his upper-class position. He gets flushed down into the lower class. After making friends and defeating a toad who is apparently really fucking racist against rats, really racist against rats, Roddy realizes that family and friends mean more to him than the upper-class lifestyle that he came from. Or actually, he doesn't care about any of that shit because he left Sid for death when he just became friends with him, and he abandoned his family to go hang out with Rita, I'm really starting to think that Roddy just wanted to get his dick wet. Thank you so much for watching this far. Please hit the subscribe button and join my call. If you like the video, tune in next time where I'll shave my head and pierce my nipples. Bye!